This is the Bell & Howell Filmosonic DCT film projector, Super 8 and sound. Uh, quite a good projector. One of the features was that it has um, automatic film threading all the way through to the take-up reel, which was a bit unusual. Lots of projectors of the day had automatic threading, but you had to fiddle around at the end and put it around the reel. But this one goes straight to the reel. The other unique feature is it can record on both the magnetic tracks on the film. Now, as you can see here, the 8mm film has a track either side. The main thick track is the main track that the camera records on. The smaller track is a balance track. If they didn't have that, then when the film was reeled up, it wouldn't roll up evenly. So they had to put a balance track on the other side to, to make the film of even thickness. Um, this projector can take advantage of that balance track and actually record onto that track so you can add music or sound effects without affecting the original track that the camera put on. So that's a very good feature in itself. It comes with a little clicker here that cuts the end of the film off so that it feeds through easily. And the other feature about it, which it shouldn't be a feature, you'd expect it to work out this way anyway, um, the automatic take up was um, very reliable and it has been very reliable on this projector where other projectors of the day used to chew film up on a fairly regular basis. This one is quite good and it's never failed. It's completely automatic threading right through to the take up reel and I'll show you that in a second. Let's have a look at the controls. Here are the two tracks that I was talking about. Track one, track two and track two and three. Uh, you can record by setting the position of this. We'll see that at the other end of the projector. Main control knob, uh, knob here, feeding the film through. The lamp comes on and a, a quaint little musical note right there that indicates that um, you have audio running. When it's in that position, the film is pressed up against the sound head. And so you have the sound. Sound mix on this one, which is uh, mixing tracks one and two together to whatever level you've, you like. And a tone control, which um, seems a bit antiquated now with EQs and stuff like that, but tone controls were all the go really, and the old radios and things. It just increased the treble or the high end of the audio. This knob here is a volume knob, obviously. The outside one is for the main track. And the inside one, as you can see there, it's got a little two on it, is the volume control for the balance track. So it would be the sound effects track on this projector. You got a record button here, which um, obviously does what it says. It records onto either track one or track two. Um, a pause button here. We have a record input here for additional line in or microphone and a, a a, a MIDI jack here also for a microphone. Uh, framing to keep the frame in line with the projector aperture, the gate, um, that's that knob there. Uh, the focus knob here, now the focus on this projector is very fussy and you don't have to move it very much to get it in or out of focus. Um, that's probably one of the least things, good things about this projector. It, it's not as easy as it probably should be. The lens is a zoom lens, so you can size the image to, depending on the size of the screen or how far you're away from the screen. Um, the slot here is where the film goes in, obviously. You push that down and the projector does the rest and it comes out on this reel. Before we do that, let's have a look inside here. Here's the lamp, which is a 150 watt 15 volt lamp which is a fairly bright lamp and uh, I mean that's drawing 10 amps so um, it's quite a powerful lamp. Here you can see the film gate. The film is automatically threaded down through there. It is formed into a lower loop here. Goes under the sound head and then the film is squeezed up against um, a capstan and a jockey wheel in the same way as the old tape recorders really 
on the other end of the spindle there is a fairly heavy flywheel so it it builds up a smooth momentum so the idea being that it smooths out any jerkiness that may be applied to the film um, works sort of um, here's the final sprocket here which pulls the film from this one up through here and feeds it to these little rollers up to the take-up spool now what we're going to do is plug it in and see what happens now you've probably heard the the pop of the audio amp firing up and also I can hear I don't know whether you can hear it on the microphone um, there is a little bit of mains hum which I guess was almost traditional with um, uh, with the uh, analog amplifiers of the day I'll switch the lamp on or switch the projector on as well so you can see what happens there is a projector running I'll turn the lamp on it will probably blind the camera I'm not quite sure what result we'll get here as you can see a very very bright light um, a lot of light actually coming through the reflector of the lamp you can't help thinking that if they have silvered the inside of the reflector a little bit better they could have uh, projected more light through the aperture rather than uh, have it spread out this way and one thing um, you may have noticed that as soon as you plug the projector in the lamp comes on in this low mode low power mode I guess it's preheat um, idea being it extends the life of the lamp um, which is a good thing because the lamps aren't cheap of course so and it's better that uh, when you do turn the lamp on you're hitting uh, a hot filament rather than a cold filament with a full voltage little counter here which does its job around here we've got um, a switch between 18 and 24 frames per second and a little adjuster thing I could never make out quite why they needed that I would have thought they could have had the projector running at the correct speed but maybe I don't know you can adjust it slightly and it gives you a, a faster or slower um, adjustment between certain limits um, the 24 frames per second is interesting because a lot of um, well not a lot but a number of feature films were released on Super 8 sound um, and playing of course at 24 frames per second as they would in a, uh, a big theater with 35 mil film we have around the back I have to unplug it to show you this here we have um, a quarter inch jack which will feed a speaker and that is a direct output from a 10 watt amp within the machine so you can have the um, additional speaker put behind the screen to give a more realistic sound effect you can monitor the each track here monitor one monitor two so you can put headphones on these and you there's a thing here called a sortie play and I'm not sure what that really means if anybody knows they could maybe let me know in the comments below traditional kettle type plug here and this switch here is high and low for the lamp it um you can have the lamp on full or low i suppose a bit like in eco mode that you might get on modern projectors today uh, i've always run the thing on low because the advantage of having it on high is the difference is minimal really so i run it on low so that um, it may preserve the lamp a little bit better so what we'll do we'll plug it in again and we'll run some film through it to see uh, the actual automatic take up in action if it does its job after I praised it up so much it probably won't so we'll switch it to film take up here and feed the film into this slot here and you can see the leader going through and winding up on the reel and there it is running on the reel that is a really excellent automatic threading it really is very very good we'll put the lamp on and also the sound
You can see the film running through the gate there on that close-up. It's a very well-made machine. The machine was made in Japan. And this machine is almost 40 years old. It probably is 40 years old. By the time it, by the time it got to the shop where I bought it, it was probably two or three years old then. I bought this in a little shop in the UK city of Bath. A little Bell and Howell shop, actually. It was called a Bell and Howell shop, right next to the Abbey in Bath. And I was rather pleased to see on Google Street View that the little shop is still there and it still sells cameras. It's not called Bell and Howell anymore, but um, it still sells cameras. So let's see Belling Howell Filmosonic DCT. Now I hope in future videos I'm going to try and um, transfer the images on these rolls of film that I have onto a digital uh, system. Um, there's several ways you can do that. The, one of which is to spend a lot of money and have each frame scanned individually and I suppose you get better quality but there is other ways to do it you can put a camera up and shoot the actual image that the projector is putting out um, there is a little bit of a problem that because you've got a parallax thing going on because the camera needs to be in line with the projector but it can be of course but there are ways that I find that you can trick around and you can get around that so um, that's what I'll be doing in the next video in a, in a week or two so I hope you like seeing the Bell & Howell Filmosonic DCT projector. It is a grand old projector.